Hey guys, what's happening? Johnny Glock here. Um, listen, I, as I always say, I try to keep everything that I show here on my YouTube channel very relative. Um, that's probably why I don't do, you know, weekly drops or something like that because, you know, as I'm working so much, I want to make sure I'm addressing things, uh, you know, that really, that really means something, uh, that, that are going to translate over to you guys that I think are going to be of benefit. So, um, you know, with that said, I, I had a mentor once that told me, the one thing he told me was like, you know, if you're teaching a class, that's one thing. Um, but if you're doing, but if you have specialized knowledge, you should always speak to the most intelligent people in the room. And so today when I'm going through all this, I, uh, um, it's going to be advanced. It's going to be rather advanced. So, you know, it's it's not like I'm, I'm teaching something. I'm just going to go over diagnostics and I'm just going to roll with what I would do is if if as if I was doing this in my own time. Um, and if you guys don't know some of the stuff I'm talking about, you know, um, I don't necessarily say I apologize. You know what I mean? Because it's, you know, it's more like a hey, catch up sort of thing. Um, yeah, I know I think here in the United States, we kind of bend over backwards to, to get our points across and to teach things. I kind of like the whole Asian martial arts thing where it's like, you know, you have to, you have to sit on the steps of the Shaolin temple for three days, uh, without food and water before you, oh, I'm good to go on, <laughs> before you get the, before you even get admittance. So basically, um, what we're going to be talking about today is uh the 44 the g44 i knew it's like i said a long time ago i was gonna do a video on this and um and i meant it because i'm doing it now but you know they are 22s and 22s can be some of the finicus 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 i still haven't said it right mm. most finicky let's do it that way most finicky guns uh out there because there's so much ammunition for them as well everything from 36 grain you know all the all the fps's are done through you know through rifles so they don't really add up a lot too to what's coming out of your muzzle in a in a 22 cal um but my conundrum is i've had this 22 you know for my kids it's one thing there's they're still shooting iron sights and i'm going to keep them that way for quite some time uh because my my um vision is not the best as it used to be hence the readers since i'm in my 50s now i i have kind of gone for the red dot sights uh full on and so with that i run a uh g44 that has a nelson precision slide um which is a great slide i got it through uh boogeyman customs i can't say enough stuff about it they've done some really great things to it and the problem is if i don't run high end especially now uh, 40 grain, like 1400 feet per second, uh, ammunition, I can't get it to cycle. And to me, that's just, I, I you know, I have 30,000 rounds of 40 grain auto match that I want to use. I don't want to keep burning through this, you know, which is basically, um, hunting ammo in my G44. So how do I address this gun to get it to do what I want it to do? And I'm going to kind of go through the considerations and what really has to, uh, what I'm looking for. And I think you guys are going to get a lot out of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by explaining. Um, and I got this neat, neat little thing here from Walmart. So this way I don't have to have Jake's over here watching because I want to, you know, I want all my employees to understand this stuff as well. So basically we got a clear gun. This is a stock G44. Um, it's just got... And if you guys are looking for sights for these, I, I love these. Um, these are Dawson Precisions. I just use the same ones that are on the 19. Uh, so Nick V makes them too that have like a little shim there. But as far as like, you know, unless you're, I mean, come on, these aren't precision guns. So basically, this is going to get as close as possible. These are the ones for the Gen 5 19. It says on the website they're not for the 44, but from what I've found, the Dawson Precision sights um black red front or you know you can change this fiber optic out to green if you want have been the best that i've been able to find for more or less if you want to use the word precision shooting for this type of uh this type of weapon so i'm going to weigh this 
and this is coming in at about eight out eight point five ounces okay and I know this might be backwards because I have to flip the phone a certain way to to shoot these videos hands-free next we're gonna check this this is the Nelson precision um, like I said really cool stuff like see how they have the you know it's not aluminum there that way the bosses and the and the set screws for the tap screws for the for the uh, for the RDS are going into something other than aluminum it's going into an alloy uh, pretty cool so when I weigh this it's coming in at 10.6 ounces which is roughly about two ounces heavier and on a gun that has the potential to be this finicky this two ounces adds up to a lot so on this I'm using a hollow Sun because that's what I use on all mine this particular gun came with uh, you know with the sights already on here so I don't know you might want to talk to uh, boogeyman customs or Nelson precision to find out what you know sight heights and all that and why they use those so um, you know this is primarily polymer but even with aluminum you can see it's and it's basically this is this is the real difference right here this is adding this is adding a lot of weight to it and in it and in the back of the gun too which actually factors in as well so you know what is going like so when I think of okay my gun is either failure to fire it's failure to feed it's you know you'll you'll uh you know you'll get a every once in a while um you know a casing that's stuck half out that's bent in half all everything and anything type three malfunctions they're all happening when i try to run different ammunition through this slide with the rmr you know and i can't really shoot as fast as i want to with it either because of just the nature of the finicky the finicky ness <laughs> Right, uh, yeah, I got it right there. <laughs> of the of the weapon. So with these, we're gonna take a look at what it actually what's actually happening here. So when a let's talk about lockup first. Okay, so lockup. I'm gonna actually bring this over here so we can get a little bit more light on this weapon. So, Alright. So this is lockup right there. Okay, well, you want this gun, you want this gun when it's, you know, when it's coming forward from even from this position, see how it locks up? That's a solid lockup, all right? This gun, if I hold it back here and let it go, see, see the difference? It's not wanting to come back into lockup. Now, the reason that is, is because I have reduced, I have reduced this, recoil assembly by taking a little bit of material off of here and as well as cut about two coils off of it because that's what I found works the best but it's still not dialed in the way I wanted to this one has the stock completely stock configuration in there and that's why when you see the differentiation in lockup you're going to see this one sail home even back here and I know the gun does not function this way the gun functions like this and that's something that you have to remember but as I'm diagnosing as I'm trying to fine-tune things I really want to do these smaller sort of things and see what's happening now with the gen 5s you might be able to hear this I don't know if you can hear this but hear that click I'm gonna do it here too I'm gonna do it with this one as well click 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 that is this new design where the hood, this little hood that they have on these Gen 5 models are disengaging the firing pin safety. It's a, like I said, it's a lot smarter idea than, um, you know, the, the circular one with the shelves on the firing pin are kind of rounded. You know, you have, and I've gone over this before with you guys, it's, you know, it's this mechanism, the rounded shelves gotta make sure I stay in here these rounded shelves and this round firing pin kind of right like that or I'll get a 43 here to show you you have on this one you have this right angle right there and that is interfacing with this right angle right there sorry about this guys I'm trying to do this stuff is get this in focus as much as possible Two different designs it's for a reason it is an innovation it's going to uh you know it's more efficient let's put it that way and that's when you look at these guns you want to think of efficiency so lockup is a big consideration now usually what happens during this process 
is one of two things can happen. When it's coming back this slow and it's not wanting to really come in right there, it's not wanting to really close that gap, you're going to get failures. You're going to get light strikes. You're going to get failure to fire. So you're going to go, you're going to pull the trigger and you're going to want to hear a click and it's going to, you know, you want to hear a bang and it's going to go click. So part of that is just because it's not closed, you know, it's not closed the whole way. And another aspect of that has to do with the extractor. Now, sometimes it can almost get there, but if the hook of the extractor, which is this part right here, that little hook on the inside, sometimes when, now let me do it exactly how it's set in the gun. When it comes back to go, when, it, when, the, when the casing is, um, you know, stripped and then loaded into the <clears throat> chamber as it's coming back like this, the extractor will kind of hang up right on the, and I know this is a, I know this is not a 22. I'm just, I need a, a little bit bigger of a something to show you guys. It's going to hang right there. It's not going to allow this to snap over top of that. And that's why even if you do get a bang, sometimes the, the fact that the hook of the extractor isn't grabbing the casings, you're going to have a, you're going to have a slide go back that uh, because sometimes there is enough room for the, even if you have the littlest bit, if it's right on there, because the extractor itself, um, you know, it, it might just be just teetering, but then boom, the gun cycles back and it leaves the, it leaves the casing in there. And all of a sudden you have a type three malfunction. Okay. So that's another consideration. So if, and that has to do with, let me grab another consideration is this spring. All right. So if I want to, <laughs> if I know I'm coming in slow here and I don't want to have the problem of this extractor having, because it's all pluses and minuses, you know, all these spring wakes, they're all, they're all kind of, you know, if you change one, they're all interdependent. Let's put it that way. That's the best way to put it. So if I want to minimize the power of the extractor, I can take some material off of this spring. You know, basically, you know, there's ways of doing it. We have pins that you chuck it into a drill or, you know, and just take some enough material off it just so have, if it does get to this area right here, and if it doesn't have as much extra, you know, it doesn't have as much spring power pushing it forward, it's going to let it bump. It's going to let it bump over top because that's the way this whole thing works. You know, it's this part is right here and it's under tension. Sorry, it's under tension. So basically, if I don't have as much tension pushing it this way with a spring, it's going to be a little bit more laxed and I'm going to be able to get it to just roll over top of the roll over top of the, the, the rim of the casing and it's going to be able to grab that and sit in there. So that's a consideration couple considerations with lockup. Now, another aspect of that that a lot of people don't wrap their heads around, not wrap their heads around, but is, and this is how you do diagnostics here. I'm going to back this up a little bit, is you start removing parts, comparative diagnostics. So, and if you are removing these firing pins, say firing pins from these guns, you got to really make sure you're getting in there and really getting down on it because these are pain. Once you start fouling up the, see, I'm having a hard time here. Once you start fouling up the, because these are proprietary. Once you start fouling up that part right there of the spacer sleeve, you start to get in trouble. Then you have to use a different tool and you can see this is already boogered up. And like I told you, this is proprietary to this striker. Same thing with the cups. So you have to be very part of, careful with this, especially because there are uh, not a lot of Glock parts in circulation right now, especially for the 44. So you'll see now, once I remove, and I remember casing's not going to be in there. So once I remove this and put this on, see what's happening? It has now completely changed the mechanism. And why is that? Why is that happening all of a sudden? It's happening because it doesn't have to contend with, this is a four and a half pound spring. It doesn't have to contend with the cruciform kick up, grabbing the striker lug face 
when it comes back in to battery, like so. All right, is everyone following that? So what does that tell you too? Okay, you can reduce this, <laughs> but you don't want to reduce it to the point where, um, you know, you're going to have, you know, failure to ignite your, your uh, you know, your primers or, or your rims on these ones because it's a rim fire. So that's another consideration. So basically, these are all, you know, I'm just trying to paint pictures here for you guys to understand how you work on, you know, if you do want to do this type of work as you're going through these guns, you know, to get to get the results that you want. Um, so like I said, I haven't gotten the results that I want from doing this. Yeah, it'll work with the, with, with really solid ammo, but like, uh, like it's not working. So basically I have to, and, and I, and I want to use a single coil for here. I finally talked to Glock and they told me this is a 14 pound spring. So I'm going to use a G19 Ismi 11 coil, or I'm going to try to match it maybe with a 13, 11 still might not be enough for it. Well, actually I've never seen a, a, a 19, a G19 11 coil. I mean, 11 pound recoil assembly spring you know, the flat coil. I, I do have 13s, but the problem is this right here is different from, once again, it's proprietary. It's proprietary to this uh, opening right there. So you can't just grab one from a, any other model and think it's going to fit in there. So right now I'm struggling with, well, should I, I got a couple of these left, so I might cut these open and use this right here and, and fashion it on because I have all the tools to do it might actually put this on a metal guide rod and then I'll be able to have it seat in there properly. But then once again, that'll cause distance. You know, if I'm taking, you know, if I'm, if I'm compressing or I'm, you know, like if, if there's too much compression, it's all about that. It's all about compression. So if I'm not getting what I need out of this spring, I'm going to run back into trouble. So I'm going to put this back in here. Put this back. So of course you don't have to I can just knock, push this thing out. I don't know if I can get my thumb on. Make sure I'm high. And actually, you know, I'll throw a four pounds. Jake, can you hand me a four pound spring? So I'm going down a pound. I mean, I'm going down a half a pound with this striker spring. And usually a four pound spring with good lockup is still enough to give you 100% primer strike reliability. You might have to change them more often, but you know, what do I want to do? I change a striker spring every, you know, thousand, two thousand rounds or, you know, have a gun that's going to not let me have fun at there. I don't mind malfunctions. I don't mind working on my malfunctions. But goodness gracious, when you have three, three in a magazine, it can get to be a little bit aggravating. You know, so the second thing, too, is this. It's it's uh, the firing pin safety. As you're coming back into battery, this thing right here is also starting to crest upon the vertical extension. So one of the other things is I can minimize the profile of the extension, but I have to make sure by the time it gets back into complete battery that I have 100% uh, disengage, I mean, 100% engaged safety. And that when I'm pulling the trigger, I have a disengaged safety. So instead of this, instead of the safety, firing pin safety, start riding this edge about right here. If I can get it to ride it, you know, just about touch it, like right at the very uh, apex of this, it's going to afford me less resistance when this slide is coming back home. So a variety, so we've already gone over a couple of things. Reducing the resistance of this spring, reducing the resistance of the striker spring, and reducing the resistance of, and like I said, the same thing, you can change this spring out here. We use three pound springs instead of the Glock five pound springs on the firing pin safety, uh, because it's, in my opinion, it's just not one of those things that needs to have a five pound spring. Okay, so that's what we've been, if you're following my logic, that's, that's what's going on here. Let me make sure we're all in here. It's gotta be down. the shot so now let's see look with that four pound spring look what just happened just the fact that i put that four pound spring in there it is now coming forward exactly how i want it to exactly like this and that was only the difference in a half pound spring so you have to remember you have to remember that it's almost coming forward better than this one now. And I don't know what's, I probably have a four and a half in this one as well. So that's the, that's the one thing with lockup. 
when this thing comes in, you want it to have a solid lockup. And then what that's going to do, that's going to minimize the, uh, you know, the potential for failure to extract, failure to feed, type 3 malfunctions, uh, a failure to ignite the pri the uh, the rim fire, the, you know, the primers, and I'll just say primers to make it simple and stuff like that. But as you can see, that let's pray when I get out there that the ammunition is good enough that the four pound spring is going to set off set off the round. Okay, so that's the first thing considering lockup, and there might be some things that I haven't remembered right now just because I'm going off the top of my head. Next is ejection. So. This is the part, so from here to here, once you see the head of the, the tip of the ejector right there, this is your ejection. So hits the casing, hits the rim of the casing, boom, ejects it out. So it's this area from here to here that I'm most concerned about. Now, the one thing you can do is, you know, you could either, you know, if you want to get, <laughs> you know, I've done stuff where I've actually heated up the ejectors and, you know, blacksmith them, you know, hand them, pounding them out with a hammer to get them longer. That's been one thing. Second thing is, um, you know, reduce the recoil assembly weight. So when you do get all the way back here, like you can see, this is very easy for me to do this on this one because I have reduced the recoil assembly weight on this substantially. But as you can see before, it, was too, it wasn't substantial enough for it to, to go right back into battery. So I was having those failures. So when, so when it comes all the way, first, the first problem I was having was ejection. So I needed to reduce that because I put the weight on here. With this weight on here, the slide to blowback, the slide to frame blowback ratio was messed up. You know, it wasn't in balance. So basically when this came back, it was, it was short stroking. You know, it wasn't able to go bang all the way back and kick the, and kick the, um, uh, kick the casing out. That's one part of it. That's one aspect of it. Now, the second aspect, and I've already, that's why it prompted me to do this video, was another thing that a lot of people don't look into. So when this gun comes out of lockup, the first, any Glock, the first thing you're going to feel is this, it's real easy right there. Then you're going to feel a resistance. The resistance that you're feeling is the hand or the dog ear, whatever you want to talk, call it, of this connector riding this ramp right here. So you have movement. Um, this is so hard to see this. So you have movement. And then as this, as this grabs this resistance, it's going to go up that ramp. So resistance is felt right there. Resistance is felt right there, right there, right there. And what I've found is when I was first working, you know, with this gun and I wanted to, you know, start to try to tune it in that, um, I really didn't like the amount I, you know, like it's, it's deduction, you know what I mean? So I'm thinking, okay, so if I bend this back a little bit toward the housing, I'm not going to have as much pressure pushing out on this outcropping. If I don't have as much, if I don't have as much from the spring steel of the connector pushing out on this, it's not going to be as abrupt of a, you know, you're not going to have that. You're not going to have that very abruptness, right? there right there right there and so you can see right here this you can't even hear it it slides and i'm going to show you why it just slides it's just sliding over now once again there's it's a balance so what i need to do is i need to fashion this connector I keep forgetting the, the camera lenses over there i need to fashion this connector so i'm still going to get a very um i'm still going to get a positive this thing has to this this has to have enough material in it to still be pushed over for reset, okay? It has to. So, and what's going to do that is the front. It, what I'm actually what's going to do that is the the tip of this. Same thing with the tip of this. So I have to make sure this has this length on it, but I don't necessarily have to make sure that it's profiled a certain way. I can remove a decent amount off the back end of this in order to not have as much surface area on that outcropping. And I need to, I need to actually do two things. Actually, what I did with this was two things. I kind of profiled this so it actually goes up the, the, that kind of half pipe looking thing in the slide, well, to be technical. <laughs> this right here, 
right there, quarter pipe actually, thanks Jake, quarter pipe. But what I did with this gun, because like I said, I'm really, really trying to fine tune this thing. What I did with this particular gun, as you can see, I changed the, and I hope you can see it, I actually changed, I got in there and I changed the transition right here. This transition, hopefully you guys can see it. You know what, I'm gonna bring this up like this just so I can I just see more like it. Do. Goodness gracious, man. Get it up underneath the light, you have it. Sorry guys, it's hard. I have our readers on so I can't necessarily see if, but you, you wanna film this part of it if I flip it? Sure. So I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna put this into, all right, now go ahead and flip it. And you can just hold it. Are you, are you, do you have that now? Can you see what... Do you have the light on there? Yeah, I'm just waiting for it to focus, but it's there. You can touch the thing, too. I'm pretty sure it focuses. Or you can yeah, back it. You can back it out. So right here, I changed the transition right there. So that's why there's this smoothness when the gun comes out of lockup, when the gun starts to go through a cycle. Whereas on this one that has not been touched, you can see the... You can see the difference, like snap, 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 snap. You can see the difference in the angle right there. So I did two things. Now let's take a look at the connector of the gun that I reworked. It's hard to see the profile difference. We'll put them next to each other. Can you back that out too if you want to? I mean, hit the button, hit that button right there. Okay, so it's very subtle. So I changed the angle, the profile angle right there. As you can see, this has a little, that has a little bit more meat to it. And if you look back here, I took away some material for the surface area. So I just don't have this. This is like a full button right there. I minimized. This is the same connectors. I minimized. I did not take away from the length because I needed to I needed to move over. But I can take away some of the angle here. And if I change the tra transition angle on here, it's going to when it comes when boom, when the when the um, explosion happens, it is going to rifle that thing back very quickly. If everyone is following me at the same time, I have videos on transfer bar drag that talks about, and this is what I talked about earlier. If you have a, if you have a connector that is hanging way out here in left field, you know, way out like that, that means it's going to be this hand or dog ear or whatever you call it is going to be putting more pressure on the slide on this outcropping. And this also includes, this also means when it's coming back into battery, it's coming backwards this way. You understand? So it's coming back on this again. So it's 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 there. It gets pushed over and back. See? See the two ways like snap and then this angle right here when it's coming back. But this doesn't have this. The springs, you know, usually compressed at that point. So when it's coming back into lockup, it's more of it. It's more this. It's more this line right here that's going to give you. It's going to give you the issue if you're really pushed up. So you'll start to see a gouge. <laughs> in that right there and that is going to slow you especially with a 22 like one of the things too like see on this slide right here that even these right here if you have a high hand if my thumb is hitting this because i'm going to actually take these off so and if i had to give you know if i had to give any any uh feedback to anyone to you know any any this company i'd say you know what just i know they look cool but get rid of these because if your thumb hits that it's going to slow the slide down it's going to slow the slide down and with a 22 that is just enough so you have to be even you know it gets down to that kind of nitty-gritty if you guys are following me that's why here on this one even if your hand's a little high it's smooth it's just going to roll on there this has the ability to slow you down okay so that's what i'm talking about when I'm talking about when it, when a gun comes all the way back into, let me make sure I have these frames correct. I would easily know which one was which because one. my son always wants the ones with the flat face, but I switched them out for. Okay, so these. Are the ones so, basically. so like I said, this is this is there this is there where we want it now, and also back here when it's coming back in right there, that's that's what's gonna slow it down, coming out and back in, out and back in. So now you have an action that is like unbelievably smooth. Do I have to mess with taking some of this away? No, not at this point. I won't know till this afternoon when I'm actually shooting this gun to see how it functions with some of the 36 grain. You know, ultimately I wanna be able to shoot anything through it. But now with this, so you can see right there, there's the, it's. 
and break the shot. There's the hold up right there. But this is the same thing. Because I minimize the weight of the recoil assembly, the whole parameter of everything changes. Everything changes. If you change one thing, something else is going to change. And the same thing, you have to understand the caliber that you're working with and the velocities and all that kind of stuff. Just with any kind of recoil, you got guys that want to just jump in it and change their, you know, they want to change their, hey, what should I change my recoil assembly weight to? I'm like, nothing. Shoot the gun. Do you have a flip problem with dive? Like, you got to, it's just not something you do. Um, because 17 pounds is what Glock has found the perfect slide to blow back ratio to be on for the weight of the slide and for the caliber. You know, so these are these are considerations when you're working on these guns. Of, and I also got some stuff. So when I'm taking material, when I'm reprofiling this stuff, I like to use Kratex wheels. Um, they're kind of like silicone and diamond impregnated silicone, you know, in a variety of different. They give you a bunch of different arbors like this. I run these on my under follow me jake i'll run these under a you know like a, a tight led like with a five diopler on a on a just a dremel at like you know depending on that's another thing you have to know the speed of the abrasive like follow the instructions of what it says so you know Craytex will be like use this wheel i don't know if it's in here it's probably sometimes yeah they have it in here so they talk all about the grit size 2500 rpm you know, so, you know, 30 to 80% of max. So th this has to be understood when you're using this. Like I get these, these are kind of like, they call them gunsmithing wheels, but you can get them from hobby shops. I use them for a lot of stuff. You know, they're, are they great? No, a lot of them I have to remake, you know, but I can change these quickly into a tool that I want to. Um, plus these are practically impossible to find. So, you know, Kratex is, the, if I am going to remove material from here, I better damn well, I'll get it on here. I better damn well know how to successively take it down. And I better make sure I'm not taking off too much because it's a one time shot. You know what I mean? So it's sm short amount, short amount, short amount, short amount. Um, and so if I don't know which one of those wheels I'm using and how to use it and what RPM, you're going to screw it up, man. And it's, it's going to be game over. You know, you're going to just ruin a slide and you're going to have to be like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it can be a total pain. But if you're if you want to get into you know i'm not even gonna say gunsmithing it's glocksmithing this is what i work with i work with glocks you know can i fix just about any gun can i work on it yeah but i'm like this is my specialty so this is kind of like where i can speak with some authority um about these these handguns and so i know i hear all the time hey do something with the 44 we want to know more about the 44 well this is it man this is probably the most in-depth that i can give you as far as what I've done to this 44. And like I said, I'm going to go out to the range today. I'm going to run this thing and hopefully I can run the 30,000 <laughs> rounds of ammo. Yeah, hopefully it still I've runs. Pre COVID through this thing because this is, you know, most of my, if I'm working on marksmanship stuff, I'll, I'll use this. But, you know, for working off the X and, you know, things that I want to be able to train with this, just as if I'm running my 19. Of course, the recoil impulse isn't there but a lot of the times when you look at the you know at that that sort of the fundamentals are there that's what's most important for me um and so half the time you know by the time i've heated my barrel up so bad that i can't you know put it in my appendix holster anymore because if i bend over to pick up a magazine oh you know what i mean <laughs> then it's time to switch over to this because you know when jake and some of the other guys come with me you know there's five of us running a drill you're fine your gun cools off but by the time if you're the only one out there it's just two of you and you're running you're running quick drills and you're doing you know 15 10 rounds per you know per uh you know per run of the drill man these guns get hot you know and that's another thing the, as the guns get hot there's issues now you know i did that nice job on this recoil assembly but what's going to happen now after i shoot you know, 5,000 rounds out of this, I'm gonna, that's going to have to change too. So I'm going to have to even write that recipe down and make sure I know what actually worked for this. But I'm hoping by the time, and I think Nelson Precision or I, I know uh, uh, um, the guys from Boogeyman have told me, you know, they have recoil assemblies that they sell for these. So I'm trying to get a hold of them to get one of those because that would be just super easy for me. That way I wouldn't have to fashion it, even though I'll probably do it anyway because I just like that kind of work. But anyway, all right, guys, that's the video for today. Um... I hope you guys uh, like and share this and share it to everyone and, and subscribe and all. Oh, my God. All that great stuff you're supposed to say here as a YouTuber. Drop, down, drop a comment. Yeah, drop a comment, something like that. But I hope this helps you out in your quest for getting your uh, 44 to eat 
anything out there. And these guns, you kind of have to keep clean. Now, I talked to the guys at Glock, one, you know, one you have all kind say. of 22 ammo. Some's copper washed, some's wax washed. You know, there's anything under the sun. So they, they told me, you know, if you're shooting lead, just about other 200 rounds, run that, you know, run the cleaning brush through there and just clean it out because that is going to factor into a lot of this. And you know how dirty 22 ammo is. Yeah. That was that was the one thing I was I was raising my hand. I want to be like, yeah. clean out your barrel area around where the, the yeah, it's gonna get caked, man. It's really gonna get caked. Same thing with you know we run a lot of twenty those CMMG twenty two conversions in our AR fifteens just because of the ammo with that as well. And that's another thing if you're not you know put your bolt in and just blow a couple through just to clean out the you know the gas tube. It's, I mean it gets it, you get it gets cruddy. So you've got to keep an eye on these. And is this one even? Yeah, this one, this one's kind of clean. I, I don't know. I'm really gonna love cleaning my guns, but yeah, yeah these no, are you're clean. way cleaner than I am with my guns. Yeah, these are relatively clean. So anyway, what's the time on this thing anyway? Thirty-five. Woo! Thirty-six. There you go, man. We did a nice old All long right. one for y'all. I like it. Oh, and another thing I wanted to announce: compliments of John Wayne. Oh, what the Duke? So I saw this. This is a. <laughs> we have a pawn shop on the other side. I saw this thing and I was thinking. I thought this it just was really got cool stabbed. about. I, I thought to myself, you know, there's the cutaway Glocks, but they're small. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, it's hard. Like you saw here, the filming that I was doing, it's hard to get these pieces in there. So we have, a, uh, you know, Sean that used to work here and then Mac. These guys work with resin printers. And then, you know, Matt, of course, from, uh, I haven't even mentioned this to him from 2A 3D printing. I want to build a, a, a 3D printed Glock that's like this big with all working parts springs are going to be the hardest part but basically if i had a big ass glock and i could show you you know the stuff like at this size like look this is this is the firing pin this big you know and i'm not saying this big but you know if you had a if you had a, a slide hey. that was four five times the size of this i mean what a great teaching instrument it would be awesome so that's what i'm going to be working on uh as well with some uh with my colleagues here about hey how can we make a big ass glock that and some, a clear one yeah well we tried the clear one but it just didn't you know it didn't really i don't even know where that slide is it uh -huh. just it was taking too much to you know there's these programs and you can buy them and sometimes they're good and sometimes they're not uh but this one in particular i wish i could find that real quick because that was cool looking I thought it would be, especially if you could have gotten, time. especially if you could have found like other, you know, ways to make the parts on the inside stand out, like glowing the dark parts or something. Yeah, I don't know where that slide is. Mac made it, but the problem with it, it wasn't really. I couldn't. It get was like it to, opaque. It wasn't. It wasn't translucent enough. It wasn't. It was translucent. It just. It was. Yeah. It was. It wasn't. It wasn't clear. It wasn't like plexiglass, but the same yeah. thing. Every try. Everything I tried to put in there just wouldn't fit. So. So anyway, man, look, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed those last few videos, man. This, uh, get a close up with the oh, new yeah. shoes in case you're checking in on this. These, new, these new shoes are so badass. They well, drop. not this one, but oh. that's the hybrid, the universal hybrid. You gotta, gotta, gotta get the face of that thing. There you go. Look, the way that trigger safety tab, it drops in off your finger. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, so a, clean. It's really like the, for the rigidity so of the, nice. you know, but like I said, you, there's a whole other video on all this stuff, so I won't. I'm not saying I won't bore you because I know it's not boring. I know I'm not boring. But anyway, um, hey, yeah, thanks for tuning in. And uh, remember, trigger control is control. People have been telling me to drop it. But anyway, see ya. Take it easy.